Forge Cup Ministries is a Bible-based church. Our mission is to bring people to Jesus Christ. God's word is above all things. It's sharper than any double-aged sword, penetrating to your soul and spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit and open your heart as you make God's word the standard for your life. Shall we clap for Jesus? You may be seated. Let me acknowledge the presence of our viewers. You are welcome once again. Even those who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook, we acknowledge your presence. Thank you for your comments and thank you for your support. I'm standing here with a message of encouragement because of what we are keeping inside our heart. This message is more like a prophetic prayer that will talk to your heart. No one knows what you are keeping, what you cannot disclose to anyone. It is only the prayer from Jesus that can reach that place. Without Jesus, you continue thinking about what you are going through, what you have done, what you do not want people to know. At the end of the day, you get nothing, but your enemy will capitalize on that one. Praise the Lord. Do you know that there are things that you cannot disclose to anyone? You know that? There are things that you cannot tell anyone. Even if you know it's your best friend, there are things that are sensitive. That if I can disclose this one, tomorrow you hear another person calling you to say, ah, ah, so all this time you have been, you know, you did this and that, before you know it, you are finished. But a prophetic message, this message will be like a prophetic prayer that will touch your heart. Your inner being must be checked. Because you cannot keep the Holy Spirit outside your body. No. Remember what Jesus said in that book of John, 14.27. He said, peace is what I live with you. I give you my own peace. And that peace cannot rest outside your body. It is inside your heart where you need to be peaceful. If your inside is peaceful with that clear conscience, when you are standing and praying, you know that the next is to receive the answer from my Father in heaven. Every believer must be like this. If you are praying because it is time to pray and you are not sure whether your prayer will be answered or not, it is as good as not to go to church. When you are praying, you must know that God is listening. To me, prayer is like a child calling the father. The child wants to eat or want, you know, a, something from the father. Or maybe a child saw a, see a criminal or a snake. He will start shouting, Daddy, Daddy, a snake is here, a snake is here. If the father is there, the father will not come without a stick because the child has already communicated that, that there is a snake here. It's either you carry the stone or a stick. Where is the snake? That is prayer. Your father must know that you are calling him. You are talking to him. You are reporting your case. If your heart is not at peace. People will continue, you know, seeing you going to church every Sunday. When you are coming back to say, ah, mwa pepe ni, niya mkwai, kwa chiba shia natao kwena, kwa chiba fie wino. What about your inside? Yes, kuchichi kwa chiba wino, but what about your inside? Are you okay? If you say the church was just okay, 
What about your heart? Prayer is not your voice. It is a way we communicate with our Father. Even without voicing out, your heart must know how to talk to your God. If you hear that there's a person who has committed suicide, if you ask, you know, the people are very close to that person, they will tell you that, yes, we, we, we discovered that he, he, he was, or she was not like the way she used to be. Because the heart is disturbed. The heart has already conceived what? Death. You can walk from your place to the place where they are selling doom. Look at the distance. Look at, are you not aware that what you are going to get is poison to kill you? You are aware. But because something has already occupied your heart, calling you to kill yourself, you'll be working as if you are going to market to get a chicken. How much is that bot of doom? Uh, this one, yes, no, that one. Which one is the most, you know, powerful? So that uh, uh, when you, you know, we spread these cockroaches, will die instantly. And inside you said, it's me. I don't want to waste time. It is the heart. If your inner being, for example, your body you know can be sick, but if your heart is health, your life is still there. People can see the symptoms all over your body to say, Mulenga is going to die. My heart is telling me that you are still there. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, 15, and John 17, verse 20. But let me start with Ephesians. This is a prayer, praying for the believers. The one in John, it was Jesus who was praying for his disciples and all the believers. For this reason, I knew before the, the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth drives in its name. This is an apostle. He said, I am on my knees, crying to the Father, to whom all the families, in short, are connected. That is our source. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner what? Being. That is the inside. He said, I am on my knees praying for you that my Father in heaven may strengthen your inner being through his what? His spirit. What changes about Christianity when you say you are a born again Christian? It's not your color or your ayat or you shift from that house. It is the character and that character will start with your heart. The Bible says that do not commit adultery. Do not give what? False testimony. Ah. You see that people who continue giving false what? Testimony. Accusing people wrongly. It is not because they, you know, they, they, they have never heard you know, anyone preaching about that. It is because of what is inside You need to be strength, I mean strengthened in your inner man. This is a prayer that Apostle was praying for the believers because he realized that people are committed, they have got that zeal. But zeal without knowledge is dangerous and is meaningless. I, I, I remember very well when I was growing in the things of God, by then I was very small with that courage and zeal to pray. When you know uh, you, you, you come together as 
young boys and girls, you start, you know, uh, speaking what you don't even know what you are talking about. You don't even know. Others will be busy. They want to pray for people. Want to pray for people. Let's pray for people. We pray for people. Others will just say, oh, I see, I've seen Satanists. They are surrounded this place where you are. It is not what you are going to say because of your feelings. No. But what the Holy Spirit is saying. You can prophesy. Maybe through information. Or maybe you read the face of that person. As long as it is not from the heart. Because anything coming from your heart, that is the real you. When that prophet comes, and it is not from the heart. When I say from the heart, I mean the Holy Spirit is in where? In your heart. You will not see any change or any answer. Or when you are praying like this, you are here because of the situation at home. There is confusion, there is crisis, there is no food, no lentils, problems all over, sickness all over. It is time to pray. You too, you stand and you start, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare, I declare. When you are praying like this, this brain is very funny. He will connect you to the problem which is where? To say, even if you are praying, don't you know that the landlord is waiting for you after this prayer? Hmm? From there you are off. You are what? But if the Holy Spirit is in your heart, even in a condition like that one, immediately you know you are ushered in in the presence of God. You forget that there is a problem waiting for you. And because of that, by the time you are finishing that prayer, the answer is already there. You see that the person who are disturbing you will not even, you know, remember that I have to go and see Mlenga because Mlenga hasn't been, you know, paying my lentils for almost five months. He will not even think about that one. The day you see him coming to your yard, you look at, uh, who is knocking? You just peep like this. You say, oh, it's landlord. You smile because that time God has already answered you. And he has already blessed you through your peace inside your heart, your heart. Even when it comes to, you know, the response that you give that person. You are not going to lie. Be, be sincere before God. See the way you talk to the people that you are hoeing. Sometimes you promise them I'd come tomorrow in the evening. You don't even know where to get the money. You are lying. What you are saying is not true. That one has already given you another what? Problem. You told them tomorrow. Before you know it. Hmm. Seven o'clock. Eight, nine, ten. Sixteen, seventeen. Land road. What are you going to say? Another lie. The next day when the land road comes, he, he will not call you a tenant. You just say you are a crook. And yet you are not a crook. It is your inner man or being which is not at peace. Because God doesn't lie. A child of God cannot lie. Because the spirit of God cannot allow you to say anything that are not, you know, part of Jesus. Are you there, people of God? Are you there? So the Bible says that I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Stop pretending when you are praying. You need to be, you know, assured that what I am doing here, I am not just wasting time. Whether I'm going to eat or, uh, or, or, or there will be no food at home, my peace inside me will give me a good sleep. Nganalala, kulala kwati ninjikuta. Nganabuka, very strong. Before you know it, God is not a man who can disappoint you. If he can feed Elijah in the bush, God can do anything if your inner being is linked to him. Because whatever you'll be doing, it's like you, you are part of his body. The way you feel when you injured yourself, maybe one of your fingers. You know, or any part of your body. It's like the whole body is what? 
is injured. He will see you walking wherever you, you be. He say, oh, this is my son. This is my daughter. If your inner being is not strengthened with his power and his spirit, you are alone. You are alone. And when you are alone, you know what Satan can do to you. This is why no matter what situation you are going through, whether rich or poor, educated or non-educated, God is for everyone. This is the prayer I'm sending to you that God should strengthen your inner being. That situation, that condition, that problem that has been there, that secret thing that you, are, you know has been disturbing you for years and years, even if you pray, that thing will keep on what? Creaking. Disturbing to say, hey, you are forgetting about this one. You are forgetting. When your inner being is strengthened with his power and his spirit, he will bury your past. He will do what? He will bury your past. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts and through faith. Let me just uh, uh, pause here before I finish 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. If Christ cannot dwell inside your heart, then you call him every day with your mouth, he's outside. You look up to heaven. No. When you become, you know, a child of God, the first place to be clean is your heart. Before you go to barber shop, if you, you know, or you change whatever you, you, you know, you were wearing, whether you used to wear something which is ungodly, before you start changing all those things, before you remove all those idols, charms inside your bedroom, your inner being must be clean to support what you'll be doing outside. That cleanness is not coming from outside, it is coming from where? The inside. Where even the appetite for sin will be removed completely. Even if you see cigarette, you see beer, you see women, you see what? You will not be moved by those things. Because your inner being is already renewed and strengthened by his power through his spirit. You get the point? If you say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I surrender to you. Wash me with your precious blood. With your mouth. And your heart is not talking like that. You are wasting your time. You are wasting, because immediately you finish that prayer, that's when you are going to boost the appetite for that bad habit. So that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts. This born again thing, or Christian thing that we confess every day. Christianity lies in our hearts. Tekunse. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and for, what made him to be strong? It's not because he was huge, tall. No. His inner being. Muka chika mutima wako. Fira tuimba murichika onde. Mumu chima mwami. Kemu hakuse wenze lankambo. Nomba imuamu musungire chifukushi. Emo mwasungira li defu mwamu aponeshe. Emo mwasungira shirenda lama mwayibire. Emo mwasungira fionse fibi fifunda wakamuisa mumutima. How are you going to be free? Freedom must start within yourself, I mean from your heart. Before you see it outside. If your inside is not free, huh, I don't know who will answer your prayer. Hmm? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. This is 18 again. Let me start where I, Yes. It's verse 18, eh? 17, oh sorry, 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love. If you say, I love you, because you are receiving something from that person, the day you are not going to receive anything, that word love cannot be there again. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You are in marriage. One month I love you. No child. 
two months, no child. Uh, three months, no child. That I love will change. They will remove I love you. They will start saying, ah, this house. I'm just coming from my friend. Hmm? The wife is expecting. Why? Because umuntu nga chakweba timuka tita muababu ino. Kuti alande fisu manenshi. Na kanwa. But if yasu nga muka ti, fiefi kalamo. That is the character. That's why you see, sometimes when you see umuntu nga chakati nga fulwa, bambifio baba nga amba fio kulanda. No kututu malekita shani. Not at fiach tikila palapen. That is the character inside where the heart. E chintu ichi kushupecho wafi wogu chita shani. Ukule kelako. Nangu kuiba. Yo, umuwa no yatu pesha mkuiba. Mula puma umuwa na muwa puma, muwa puma, muwa puma. It is the, in, the spirit of stealing. It's not in his blend. It is here. You can talk to the mind. Your child will listen to you and say, Mommy, daddy, na leka. Before you know it, phone ya luba. So this is my message to you people of God. What we are keeping inside our heart is what is giving Satan more chance to locate you. This is an apostle praying for you believers. Let me take you to John as well so that we, 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 we marry the, the two. John 17 verse 20. Yes. This is now Jesus. This is what he said in verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one. All of them may be what? One. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. This is Jesus now. He said, my prayer is not for them, for them alone. I want you to know something. The prayer that you offer must be linked to this prayer. Are you there? The prayer that you offer every time, because the one who is praying for you is Jesus. Remember the first uh, chapter. So that you may be what? Strengthened. Through his spirit here. Now, Jesus said, my prayer is not for them alone because he was praying for his disciples. Then he realized that my disciples will be preaching to the people in the world. So let me cover them through this prayer. Those who, who are going to believe this prayer, immediately you become born again. You are linked up to Jesus. The prayer that he offered is going to be upon your life. I don't know if you understand this. Because in Gamule Pepa, Mpepa ma problems, you are there. You cannot, you know, pretend to be a child of God. If you have got spirit of lust, one day, the thing that you have been, you know, keeping, you, you don't want anyone to know that this is your weakness. Satan will use that one to afflict you with a big problem. He said, my prayer is not for them alone. It's not for the disciples alone. So simply, that prayer is not a record. It's not, it, it's not a time, you know, bound prayer. That prayer is a 24-7 to everyone who believes in Jesus. You are connected to that prayer. If you believe in his word. Before you start, you know, praying for yourself, Jesus is the one now praying for you. Hmm? I, I hope you understand this. If my brother here is a smoker, he smokes a lot, that urge of smoking is from here. You can talk to the blend. The brother will promise that I'll not let her. But doctor can advise him, no, my brother, you are risking your health. You better stop this smoking. The thing is here. You will just leave the doctor's office. I'm <clears> broke, <throat> Papa. I won't steal. Hmm? I didn't control her. Finishing up what they've done. Aba, aba, and dalama badi. Fuanga ine finishing the chita pachal. These are the things that we, you know we hear from people. 
If my brother become a child of God now, the first place that will, you know, it, it will be it, it, it attended is the heart. Umubiri kutu wamone kalimbiari take mishishi Afrika nomu. Before tamula mubeye mishishi, Jesus nishina na muamiyaka lekuisa kumutima. Mailo nanguabuka eh, takabwelele kuri fimofini. So, umutima, enchende, tukuma ni napona lesa. Hmm? Ngavali michitere disappoint, why not, you know, forgive and forget? Why? What are you getting out of that? What are the benefits of keeping things that are disturbing you? So, this is the message. Jesus will enter your heart today by force mm, and stop those demonic activities so that you start, you know, walking freely, you know, speaking freely, eating freely. Let me end there. God bless you.